Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our virtual session. This is the Wasiliana Hub Quarter 3 Virtual Mediation Day Symposium in the year 2021. Our theme for the Symposium Day is a regional outlook at the alternatives in labor disputes, resolution, and workplace relations. This is our session on the Thursday, September 23rd in the year 2001, and is part of the five sessions during this symposium day. This is part of our morning session at 10 a.m. to 12 noon, where we have regional panel speakers speaking to us in the session where the keynote is with the Federation of Uganda Employers. And also we have a session within this uh, mediation symposium day morning segment that is on mediation and mental health in the workplace. This segment that we have now is with our speaker, Alex Ninge, whose work is in global business and sustainability. And the topic for the discussion is building better workplaces, the past, now, and into the future. This session is hosted by Wasilian Hub and is part of the three symposium days that are hosted in the year. The first one is hosted in March. Quarter two symposium day is hosted in June. Quarter three symposium day is hosted in the month of September. Then in November and December, we host the virtual African International Mediation Week. With that, then I wish to enable us to be able to start off this session. And once again, just as a reminder, this session is hosted as part of the Mediation Africa Forum uh, series that is hosted by Wasilian Hub. As part of this uh, starting off, we will start off with the words of the national anthem. And this being the first in a series of East, the East African community labor and dispute resolution sessions, we will say the East African anthem. And then also, we will also say the Kenyan national anthem as the host country for this uh, particular session. So with that, I invite us to the session. If you have any questions or inquiries, please feel free and send them in the chat. Tutanza kwa kusema wimbo wa the East African community, Jumuiya ya East Africa which is the East African Community Anthem in Swahili. The first stanza. E mungu tuwaomba ulinde, jumuia Afrika mashariki, tuweze she kuishi kwa amani, tutimize na malengo yetu. Jumuia yetu sote tuilinde, tuwajibike, tuimarike. Umoja wetu ni nguzo yetu. Idumu jumuia yetu. That is the East African community anthem in Swahili, the first stanza and the chorus. As indicated at the beginning, this is our regional panel, the first in a series on alternative lab alternatives in labor disputes resolution and East African labor symposium series and that is why we have shared the east african community anthem our first uh, segment of this session we hosted with the federation of uganda employers taking us through the alternatives in labor disputes resolution in uganda and we were pleased 
to host the Federation of Uganda Employers, Madam Grace Nabakoza, who is the head of employer relations and legal. We also hold, hosted mediator Patricia Okech, who is a counseling psychologist and mediator on the topic mental health and mediation in the workplace, this being the mental health month. In this session, we will have Alex Ninge, who works in global business and sustainability on the topic, build better workplaces, the past now and into the future. So we may kindly now have the Kenyan national anthem. And we will recite the first stanza of the national anthem. The Kenyan national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa wa Nchi ya Kenya. E mungu nguvu yetu, ilete baraka kwetu, haki iwe ngao na mlinzi, na tukae na undugu, amani na uhuru, raha tupate na ustawi. With that, we now invite the speaker, our third speaker in the regional panel speakers panel, and that is uh, Mr. Alex Ninge, who is giving us a session on build better workplaces, the past, now, and into the future as part of a regional outlook at the alternatives in labor disputes, resolution and workplace relations for mediators. This is part of the effective mediator series hosted by Wasilian Hub during the quarter three virtual mediation day symposium. Good morning. Alex Ninge. Good morning to you. Morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Wangare, for this invitation. And uh, it's a pleasure to be with you, Waslina Hub, and uh, the rest of the audience. I'm um, here this morning to share with you, as Wangari has mentioned, uh, principally about trying just to look at uh, how the workplace has evolved. So what I've done is that I've tried to look at the last 50 years and try to see what are the trends and what, what has been the impact uh, of uh, especially innovation and technology and how it has changed the way we work and also try to look into the future. Uh, though now with the pandemic, I think the future is here already. So yeah, it's no longer about thinking about 10 years, five years down the line, but we are already in the future. So I'll try and make it as uh, succinct as possible. And hopefully it's going to be relevant to the rest of the symposium. So looking back into now the last, uh, back 50 years, around the 1970s. So just trying to look at what have been the trends in that uh, in those two decades 1970 to 1990 and the reason for this is because uh, that this is when we can call about we can talk about the digital revolution that we've been going through and that's when uh, technology started becoming very a big part of the workplace but then what you'll notice about these two decades is when the technology was being developed and being evolved and slowly becoming uh, getting into the workplace um, also within the what you can call the the white collar jobs uh, but then also the technology had huge impact in terms of how manufacturing was done how travel changed and I think some of the key characteristics you can see at that time was the whole idea about office cubicles. Uh, if uh, for those who might be privy of this particular time, it, it was all the idea that everybody had sort of their own cubicle. You go into a work environment, uh, everybody has their own space. Uh, and you'll find what you call the systems to be, especially if it was a storied building, whereby you know it's almost depending on your rank. So the people who are in lower rank will be in the lower floors and the very senior management will be at the very, at the very top, uh, which was a trend at that particular time. And a lot of time, at that time, some of the dynamics was there was not so much of collaboration. Everybody was expected to work uh, by themselves. These were your goals. This was what you're supposed to deliver, do your job and uh, get it delivered. Clocking at the right time, clock out uh, when it's time to leave. And then there was very little tech at the time, as much as you can see on the right side of the presentation showing when a lot of the technologies that are some of them synonymous with us today. Some have gone, they are more or less extinct already. Let's say, for example, the DVDs, the PDA, personal digital assistant. So some of those are common technologies for some time. Uh, but then you see a lot of the, the for example, the email, uh, which originated from uh, uh, from the US uh, Army, uh, 
that's the time that technology the email but now we for us technology email now is common it's like it's not even something to really talk about and you can be able to see other technologies at the time they came in the word processing uh looking at others like the microsoft uh, software the and also looking at the first computers okay not necessarily the first computers but some of the very renowned computers like the apple uh when it came through and also we are seeing towards the end of that particular duration late the late uh the late 80s uh, to the early 90s that's the time the mobile phone uh, 1988 specifically you're seeing the mobile phone and then the internet was not created really until the 1990 and then now we can be able to see how that has impacted us and then we move on now to looking now up to date uh, from the 2000s and then this this new millennium and uh, this is whereby we started seeing, for example, the workplace. Uh, employers started thinking that uh, yeah, employees maybe need to be more comfortable in the workplace. This is whereby things like what kind of desks do your employees use? Uh, we started looking into these particular trends like the remote working. Uh, I know it's now become synonymous because of the of the pandemic, but in some sec in some sectors like the tech sectors, this this had become fairly common even prior to the pandemic. And we started seeing things like talking about social collaboration uh, in the workplace, even the technologies that came up that could enable people to collaborate more. Now it's becoming synonymous, especially because of the, a lot of the video conferences that we are doing. But then you find things like Skype, uh, which was one of the early, uh, almost let's say video conferencing uh, facilities that were there at the time, which was mostly used for socially in terms of you need to call, you don't have to call your colleague or call somebody across the world on the mobile phone. And it was a huge revolution whereby uh, you didn't have to call or using the landline, but you could actually use an internet connection to be able to, to do that. And then we've also seen like now the smartphones, uh, these have become, uh, they've been available for some time, but then the whole idea about access is whereby the cost uh, of, of smartphones has come down significantly. And apart from that, it's also the issue of uh, data. Uh, cost of data has become a lot lower. I know a lot of us are joining this through our mobile phones, our smartphones, and we're able to stream this particular call live right, because we're able to have a, a decent connection, but also at a, at a fair cost. And then the thing also is also the whole idea about sharing files. We now work with colleagues who who might be across the continent, uh, who might be across the seas, or even now when we have the lockdowns or offices are closed, we're still being able to collaborate. We can work together. For example, a presentation like this, if you are doing two of us, we'll have been able to edit different parts of the presentation at the very same time. So you find there's a lot more efficiency. You don't have to wait for your the other person to complete and send over the file to you, but you can actually be able to, to work on it uh, be able to work on it on real time. Same thing you can be able to see on the left uh, side in terms of some of the technologies and when they came in, the GPS, Skype, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, 2004, that's the time we had Facebook. They have had huge impact. The YouTubes, uh, those particular technologies have really, really changed a lot in terms of what, uh, what we are seeing. So it's, it's become, collaboration has become mainstream and I think it's really came in handy uh, with the pandemic. It would have been a huge crisis if we really had not started out adopting this, but then also I think the pandemic has fast tracked because a lot of what we're doing now is things that will have been commonplace maybe the next five, 10 years. But what has happened is that the pandemic has shrunk in the span of six months, one year has really shrunk uh, what we call our future. But then now there's also been some, some, some challenges that have come with the technology now where there is a lot of distraction. Like now in such a presentation is a probability some of us in addition to listening, we are probably also looking at messages in our phone. We are responding to WhatsApp messages or uh, also we there's other things or you're probably typing there. You they still there's, there's something you're typing on site. So you find there's a lot of distraction that comes up. And from some studies, it says that uh, up to 40% of, uh, of someone's productive time is, is taken up by shifting tasks. It means that uh, you're handling multiple things at the same time. So there's a lot of uh, also... Uh, distraction that is happening uh, in the workplace based on the technology. And then uh, as it come towards a close, you're also looking at uh, what will the future workplace look like? I think if I'd done this slide uh, about 18 months ago, uh, just before the pandemic at the beginning of 2020, it will have been very different in terms of uh, the nature of how uh, looking to what the future could be like. Yes, we don't know how the future will be like, but you can try make some projections. 
uh, because now we can look at uh, where where are we at with technology. Like now, for example, if you look at some uh, wearable technology, it started becoming commonplace. Many of us uh, probably you have a smartwatch. Uh, in addition to looking at the time, there's other things it does for you. It probably alerts you. You have a message. Maybe you can be able to look at. You've received an email, an SMS. It can alert. It alerts you. So even if you're not your phone on you. It, you're able to know that you maybe want to book an appointment you can just talk to your watch and tell it yeah book for me an appointment at uh, this particular time and it's going to save it back on your phone or even alert the other person you want to uh you want to be able to engage with so you're finding that a lot of the what will happen is that uh and for me i think this is going to be sooner than we would have expected because now with the pandemic uh, even from my previous slide a lot of the things that we are doing now will have projected be five, 10 years down the line. So for me, it means that we brought all our future forward uh, significantly. So a lot of these technologies will become synonymous. Like for example, virtual reality, it's been there, uh, a picture whereby in the next possibly two years uh, or even sooner, whereby for Asiliana Hub, they'll be hosting us uh, on such sessions using virtual reality. So we'll be feeling like all of us are in the same room. Yeah, We all sitting back in our office or at home, but it almost feel like that. We'll be have maybe some kind of a lobby when you come into the lobby as a typical conference in a, uh, it was a face-to-face -face conference. We'll maybe meet in the lobby, do some small chit chat. So it'll be such a way whereby I'll not be sort of like sitting here and almost uh, seeming to be static, but it'll be like we're talking to each other. We, we we know and met, met each other. The other things as well is now what even what will enable this more is looking at where we are at with connectivity. A lot of countries are talking about now 5G. Uh, you find the case of Kenya, uh, Safaricom uh, has started launching 5G. So it means the kind of internet speeds you'll be able to receive will enable some of these things to happen. You'll be able to have process a lot of data uh, gigabytes of data. So it will enable things like the virtual reality to become real because now most of the time the technology means that the technology exists, but there's infrastructure that is lacking. So it means that now since we're seeing that this infrastructure is being infrastructure, it means it's going to uh, enable this to happen. Things like artificial intelligence, that will become mainstream. A lot of times for, for most of us, it feels a bit far off, but it's, it's going to become mainstream. It will mean uh, we'll have more smarter gadgets uh, beyond just our phones and our, our tablets. We'll have devices uh, that will be more smart, whether it's from the devices we have at home, like our fridges, our TVs, etc. But also within the workplace, it will be, we'll find that we'll have devices that uh, will be able to enable us to multitask better. So maybe it will enable to uh, address some of the challenges we have with the technology at this point in time. And even the web as well. There's a huge evolution about the, uh, around the web uh, in terms of the browsing capabilities. Uh, this is technology that has come up maybe just in the last year or two. But then this for me is like looking at, uh, starts asking us several questions. Uh, and this already we've been asked by the pandemic now, will the physical offices continue to exist? Uh, there's a lot of people who are in real estate have invested a lot into a lot of these, uh, what do they call the high-rise buildings, uh, huge challenges getting tenants or the situation whereby a lot of landlords you've had to renegotiate with your tenants or you're finding uh, huge companies saying that uh, we no longer need to have three office blocks. Uh, we probably just need to have one or maybe we need to have some staff working either full-time remotely or we come to the office once or twice a week or in a sort of in a rotational basis. So it means that uh, this, these are realities we have now. The only thing that will happen is that uh, with the advancement technology means that in the next uh, two, three years, even now, if you're a real estate developer, you might need to rethink in terms of how you build, you're putting up that building or how you remodel your building in such a way that it can continue being attractive because now a lot of uh, the, the, the employees or the, the, the workplace would be very, the, the way we work would be fundamentally different. Same thing with an employer. It means that now uh, we, we now, a lot of the workforce is now becoming the millennials. Uh, this millennial means the people who, uh, millennials and after. These are people who were born uh, into technology, or at least there was some form of technology right from when they were born. Uh, the people born from the 2000s downwards, as you saw, there was quite a big of technology at that time. And even the others that who are now the digital natives, these are people who, for them, uh, smartphones, laptops, internet is is nothing it's 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 almost uh, it's commonplace for them so it means that uh, as an employer 
how do you interact and engage with the employee? Because you'll find an, an employee, yes, they're amazing at their job and they're asking you, well, why do I need to come to the office? You just tell me what I need to do and I can do it from wherever I am. Yeah, we'll find people choosing to go live uh, not even live in the same city as the office, but because they, 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 for example, they're able to connect. So those are some of the realities whereby even as employers, we'll need to start looking at how we engage with our employees very, very differently. And we'll be able to, if it's a meeting, you want to have a staff meeting because maybe you want to keep the, the, the spirit for the team. You probably have software that can enable you to do that. I can be sitting here at home. Maybe I'm sitting in my, in, in my home uh, or you are sitting you're out in your farm, that's where you want to you want to be, or you want to be in an office. So it will enable you to have sort of more a feel of real time of real uh, engagement. So I think for me is that when you look at the future, it's really looking at where we've uh, what what has been happening over the last let me say eighteen months during the pandemic. Uh, in in terms of how we interact, uh, we took a bit of uh, a month or two initially to, to adopt, but then because the, the reality, the forced reality, and one example I like to look at is in the education sector. A lot of times we'll have had a lot of teachers saying, yeah, we don't know how to use these devices, we don't have access, we don't have internet access, uh, we've not been trained, but then it happened with the pandemic whereby schools have been closed. Yeah, your kids can't come to school. So there's no, and for you, you will probably need to still make a living as a teacher. Uh, you can't start saying, I don't know how to use this device. I need to be trained. I need to be trained over six months, two years. It became overnight whereby as a teacher, you had to be able to use, like now the, the, the environment you're using now, I, uh, be able to, to teach your students online. Yeah, so I think it's a similar thing as well, even in, the, in the, any other workplace whereby what has happened over the last 18 months that's that's our new reality. The only thing now is that uh, the technology will enable us to do a lot more, and it's not about these changes happening over the next decade uh, or then over the next uh, generation. But for me, all this I believe will happen over the next about five years, uh, whereby all this will be reality. So it's really for us, uh, from a mental perspective, and also infrastructure, ensuring that we can be able to thrive in this new kind of environment. So it's a new reality for employers, and I think same thing for the employees, and it's for us, all of us to be able to be ready. But I think the pandemic has really helped us, uh, in, in, uh, helped us to get there a lot faster. So I think, uh, thank you so much. And I think that's it for my presentation. I'll be happy to take on, uh, on some questions, uh, but I hope it's been of benefit and uh, I hope we'll be able to continue exploring further because I think there's a lot more we need to explore in terms of what's the new reality uh, of the workplace uh, based on the pandemic, but also the advances in technology. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for uh, your presentation. And uh, uh, you, you've just given us a very, uh, a very good uh, uh, in, in, uh, eye opening uh, approach as we are looking at the topic of build better workplaces, the past, now, and into the future. And uh, this, this session is geared for the effective uh, mediator to be able to understand the landscape that then as mediators, we are operating in and also the, the influences that are either expected to come just so that we can be able to serve the people that we do work with better. And also in the course of this, it can also give us an opportunity to be able to reflect in terms of sometimes also the, the, the capabilities that we have uh, been adding to ourselves in terms of what either new directions would enable us to be able to serve the workplace, workplaces better. So we had a presentation or we just had a presentation from Alex Ninge who works in global business and sustainability. Um, Alex Ninge is also uh, uh, one of the fellowship coaches that we have in the ongoing uh, fellowship national certificate for mediators in Kenya. And uh, his uh, last session with the fellows was on critical thinking and this um, uh, this uh, session also adds in a lot of value and uh, thank you very much for your insights. And uh, with that, we will be able to come to the number of questions that we have. Um, and uh, I will, I will uh, they, they, uh, they are quite related. And uh, if we may just go through them one by one and they are related in the context of helping mediators to be able to understand uh, different stakeholders who are in the workplace. And uh, the question that we have is, is generally uh, on how
how do the changes in the workplace affect? So firstly, we have the HR professionals and also the HR profession, the human resource uh, profession. Uh, then uh, the second category still in the same is we, um, how does the workplace, uh, how do the changes in the workplace affect managers and supervisors in the workplace? They are normally the ones who have the charge of, or have been having the charge of uh, de designing the workflow, uh, de uh, hiring people in their segment, in their sections, supervising them, reporting about them, and also doing the uh, supervisor appraisal. How does that affect? And this is generally across, um, the, um, let me say, like all industries, because I know industries can be very specific. Um, the third category of stakeholders we have in the workplace who are also important um, is the board of directors. And when you talk about board of directors, we could be talking about the owners, the founders, or just the people who um, have especially the capital, capital stake in the, in the organization. So sometimes it could even be the investors. Then we have the next category is, um, how do the, these changes in the workplace affect the employees as, an, as, 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 as a category? So we could uh, uh, please uh, start off with just a look at those uh, stakeholders, and then we can uh, be able to take the next uh, the, um, the next uh, segment of uh, inquiries. So over back to you, uh, uh, Alex. All right. So thank you for those questions. It's a very good, very very good question because uh, as we talk about the various stakeholders within a work work environment. One of one of the things that binds that binds them is the the agreements that are in place. For example, if you're an employee, there's a contract uh, you have with your with your employer, and I think some of these changes, and I think it's the norm, especially with technology, is that uh, there are certain things. Let's say, for example, you might have a contract that says. Uh, your workplace is this particular place and maybe go specific up to the building and you're required to come to work from eight to five, or for example, yeah, or very specific in terms of how you're supposed to work. And this is your job, these are your tasks or this is your job description, or A, B, C, D. So you find that now with these changes that we are seeing uh, or what we've actually been seeing, it means it, it disrupts a lot of that. So do I go back as an employee to say that, well, uh, my workplace is uh, KICC, uh, but I cannot go to KICC because maybe there is a lockdown. Yeah, that's specific. Does it mean I don't work? Yeah, or does it mean what does that mean? And at the same time, would like as a HR professional come back to you and tell you, well, we since you are not able to come to work, you are no longer my employee. So it raises some questions whereby um, it's maybe like the lockdowns that, that have been there or the times that they've been there. It, so what do we what do we do? Uh, so but then so it means it brings some fundamental fundamental issues, and I think it could be across the board for the various stakeholders because same thing with the, your manager or your supervisor. Now a lot of times uh, there was uh, what is it called? Uh, I think it was called management by walking around yeah, by in a work in a workspace where uh, in a workspace your employee your employee your supervisor will principally be coming around to see do you seem to be working or all that. But then now maybe more and more people are working remotely. So how do you sort of like supervise that work is being done? But then also it means that uh, it brings another interesting part because. A lot of people, there's also a lot of people who've been working, uh, who do the digital jobs or online jobs. And there are tools and systems that exist to sort of like monitor and track what you're doing. Because maybe you're being paid by the hour, for example, yeah, or you're being paid uh, for, the, for your output. So depending. So it means that now for a lot of other workplaces who typically would not have thought of themselves as being online, uh, providing online jobs, might want to consider uh, putting in place such technology. Because sometimes there are certain jobs which are maybe the measure of, but it's not just the output, but it's also in terms of you being able to measure the time you've been able to deliver. Because now, for example, you're working for, a, let's say, a law firm or a consulting organization. So you need to build uh, the, the client. And to an extent, you need to, sh to provide proof that this work was done based on, it maybe took 10 hours, took five hours. So it means, there is need to adoption adoption of technologies that we would not have thought would be relevant to let me say mainstream 
uh, work environment. So it means that such things will probably uh, need to be uh, considered. Uh, and so and does that infringe? It brings some other pertinent questions where maybe the legal people can be able. Does that infringe on an employee's rights in any way? Because it means you have a tracking mechanism on my, on my let's say, the laptop. It could be a work laptop, yes, but now it brings a question in terms of is there any legal concerns uh, in that particular uh, that particular aspect so i think the thing the whole idea about this it looks like we we finding ourselves in a situation where we are throwing a lot of things into one bowl and we're doing some mixing up so it means that uh, we still have a lot of things to actually figure out and i think the same and also looking at it uh, for the for the board or you say the now the people who own the uh, who own the organization so it's it's it also brings a lot of uh, decision making that has to be done. Whether it's those things whereby you're talking about what is the kind of physical space we require, what is the kind of work environment that we need to provide for our employees. Because most of the time maybe you'll be thinking, yeah, we do need to provide an office. Uh, we do need to pr maybe provide standing desks. We need to provide a good internet connection. But then it brings for you the question now. Well, maybe my employees now are working more and more from home. Does, what does that mean? Does it mean now, well, I need to take the internet connection to their home? Do I need to provide them, a, let's say, a proper, I don't know, a desk and chair or something like that that would work within the work home environment? Because typically at home, you might not have had to have such kind of a setup, apart from maybe your dining table. Do you need to think of such things, uh, economic chairs, uh, etc.? So I think it, it comes uh, by even for you down to your PNL, uh, really need to, 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 to do it differently because now, it's it's not the norm what we've been probably used to the last 100 200 years uh, but really needing being forced to to look at it very differently because now for you to continue having that efficiency then you can't continue looking at things the same way i know at some point uh, and more and more the the the, the what are they called the restrictions that have been there uh, tied to lockdowns and they, they'll probably be lifted at some point maybe in the next year or so but it doesn't mean we need, we'd be going back to where we were. We have to accept that that past is gone, that ship has sailed, and a lot of the aspects need to dif be different. So it means even now, uh, if you are if you are a manager, you sort of need to have different uh, skill set. It means like uh, maybe even HR professionals need to re re look at the entire workforce and see probably the certain people who are better at supervising people face to face. The other people who are better at maybe because of either relation building or that, they can be able to inspire people who they don't even sit together in the same kind of environment. So it, it means that uh, a lot of these particular dynamics will actually change. So it means when the workplace changes, it's the entire workplace. It's not just how we do work, but also it's other factors that come in to enable uh, an effective workplace. Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Alex, for, for, for those uh, those insights. Um, allow me to also just uh, bring in the, the, the next set of uh, inquiries that, that, that we have. And these are focused more on um, the, the, the way we have known the nature of the relationships uh, in, in, in the workplace. And uh, the question that we have is that, that um, with now this, uh, these changes that are there uh, in the workplace or that are expected. Uh, what sort of, what's the type and nature of relationships that we expect to now um, be able to uh, see in the workplace? I think just one of the things is, uh, or probably just in the comments is that it seems that there are direct links now between the boss and the employee who is on the shop floor before we probably had different layers of people, you know, before the boss and you can get to the boss, there are different layers that even an employee or, uh, or even uh, people who work with the business would probably require to be able to, uh, to go through. Customers today, they have channels which, you know, they just post on one of the social media platforms and the message goes straight to uh, the, the senior most in the organization to also goes to the junior most and also the one who is, let's say, involved in, um, the particular matter. So well, what is your uh, take on the nature, the type and also the nature of the relationships? And then what is the, still tied to that then, what is a new type and nature of conflicts that we expect to possibly see in the workplace? And uh, this mainly um, arising uh, because uh, mediation um, normally comes in to be able to support people to be able to uh, 
uh, bring back or to redesign sometimes the relationship that they have so that they can be able to advance on the common interests. If it is um, in a situation of labor disputes um, that, that mediation is used or uh, to advance work relations, then it is because there is an interest to continue to be able either to work on together or that uh, the employer and the employee uh, need each other in terms of either the skill or you need uh, to get uh, salary or to be able to get promotions from the employer. So what do you see as the new type and nature of relationships? And then what type and nature of the conflicts then will come as a result of this? Thank you. So I think, I think for this, uh, the, uh, the uh, metaphor can use is that uh, as, as in the book, uh, I think the book is what is it? the world is flat. I think the, the, the workplace has become flat. Yeah. And I think, uh, and by flat, I mean that uh, a lot of the either bureaucracies or a, a lot of the structures that were there to, maybe they were there at the time for good reasons, are no longer applicable now. Uh, that's why, for example, uh, initially, even one of the, the examples they gave was whereby an office in, a, in the 70s or there about an office building will be, let's say, let's say it's five stories. So you'll have the ground floor will be maybe the more, the very junior staff. Uh, the next floor, maybe it's the supervisors. By the time you get to the, to the top fifth floor, that's where the board sits. And it would be almost unheard, a hard off of somebody from one floor going to the other. That's where the people from the junior floors going to the next floor. Uh, it would be like what are you doing here? And there'll be very bureaucratic processes for you, maybe if you need to, to pass across a certain message. Uh, but then now what it is, is that uh, that is no longer there now. Uh, it's whereby even for an employee, you, you almost have access to any any other uh, anybody within the organization. First of all, you find that even through, let's say the email system, you can be able to see the entire organogram of who's who in the organization. So, you know, even if you don't know them in person, you know who's your boss and who's your boss's boss and you understand the chain all the way. So it means the whole idea about the access uh, to any of these individuals, it's very easy. Even if it's an email address, you want the email address for the CEO, it's very easy to get it. So if you need to communicate for one reason or the other, it's it's just uh, it's just a click, it's just a click away. So it means that uh, if now, if when it comes to issues of disputes, uh, it's very easy to escalate, uh, escalate a, a concern. Let's say I'm not able to get along with my boss for one or the other. I, I can easily reach out to my boss's boss uh, to be able to particularize there is the issue. So it means that uh, it could be good or bad because sometimes it means that uh, if it's done in the right way, it helps manage the disputes better. Uh, if not, then it really complicates uh, the relationships as well. But it means that being flat, then we have a lot more access. And it's the same thing as well, even with the customers. They they have access they, to anybody, even especially with social media. And one thing you see is that uh, this grant or client uh, customer or client is able to go, let's say with Twitter, you can be able to tweet directly to the CEO of the organization and say, this, I have this particular issue. And you find that it becomes very public knowledge. So it means that... Uh, even for any particular disputes, uh, I don't even know whether that's the, that's the right word for this particular scenario, but any issue or concern, uh, it's really easy to put it out there and it doesn't have to follow the bureaucratic channels. Uh, write a letter to customer care, uh, send a letter and wait for 48 hours or is it two weeks to have a response. It's something that you can be able to raise and hopefully get a resolution in a very short time. So it means that, uh, uh, what it means what it means for the mediators that also for us we need to sort of as mediators look at conflict in a different way uh, web, uh or conflict resolution in a very different way because now it means that uh conflicts will probably be there'll be a lot more conflicts that uh come that come out because now people are more empowered uh they, they feel that they have platforms to be able to raise their their issues so the question is hard as mediator do you take advantage of that to create an opportunity or to be able to create uh, a solution. So part of it, I feel that uh, as, as mediators, it shouldn't be just be the traditional mode of mediation. Let's sit down uh, with the, the different parties. I think for us, we have an opportunity to, to influence uh, the form of conflict resolution tools or 
or even regulations that have that exist within our own organization. So for you as a, as a mediator, it doesn't have to be only relevant for you to be engaged at the time there's a conflict, but you can actually almost let me say short circuit the, the system whereby you work with HR professionals, for example, to be able to, to create the mechanisms that can help uh, reduce or when there's a conflict, there's be clear in terms of the channel. Uh, the channel to address it so that it doesn't become combative because it's very easy to be combative because access is there. I can access the CEO, I can access whoever, I can be able to maybe uh, even use, uh, let me say, let me call them that channels whereby you hire somebody. By hire, I mean that you hire, let's say, somebody online to post certain things, uh, maybe against the organization or against your boss. So I think for, for, for me as mediators, it's looking, the real opportunity is easier looking at us going beyond just waiting until yes there's this case uh come and sit with the people to resolve it but thinking in terms of what role can you play more proactively towards ensuring that uh, the mechanism are set in place that address or forestall these um, conflicts within the work environment yeah thank you i think that that has a, has been a very good coverage and also um, a, a, um, a way for mediators to be able to understand the landscape that uh, we are now uh, operating in, what is possibly how the future looks like. And uh, I really um, acknowledge the, your, your, just your comments in the, in the closing, uh, in, your, in, your, in your final uh, sec segment, uh, section in this um, part, when you're speaking to us and saying that, uh, that uh, mediators can actually take time to be able to uh, look at the future into the workplace and be part of actually influencing, get involved, participate, and with uh, uh, persons who are in, uh, involved in the workplace, whether it's the human resource professionals, the boards, and also policy makers, and now then be part of uh, looking into what is the next best or the, the new ways that uh, the workplace can have actually better ways to be able to resolve disputes. I think just as the, 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 this particular session uh, says, build better workplaces. I think that's what uh, you, we, we can take away from you as mediators getting involved to enable the uh, building of better uh, workplaces. So as part of the effective mediator series, we may kindly be able to have your closing uh, statement for this session to uh, the mediators and dispute resolution professionals as we get into closing this session. Thank you very much. Back to you, Alex. Uh, thank you. And I'll just say some short words. So when, when you look at in terms of how can we build uh, better workplaces, and I think for us as mediators, uh, those who are in the mediation practice, I think it's really looking in terms of as the changes are happening, uh, we, we shouldn't look at ourselves in a silo or look at ourselves sort of like at the end of the conflict, uh, at the end of the conflict uh, situation. But we need to look at ourselves in terms of how can we play into the entire evolution, let me call it as that, that is working, that is happening in the workplace. In such a way, we entrench a lot of the practices and approaches uh, that, medi that mediation has into the work into the work environment. Uh, so and that, because I think that's really what should be the trend into the future. Because you're seeing with the and as I showed with the evolution in the technology, a lot of these technologies that we thought would be for our kids, uh, or the, for the time our kids would be in the work environment, are going to be within our time, uh, within our working time. Uh, so it means that uh, we do need also as mediators to look at how will this evolution of technology, how is it likely to bring in conflict? What areas, what can we be able to do in terms of, in such a way that we can even influence how the technology is designed or influence the policies that are that there that will ensure that uh, the, te the technology does not bring in more conflict. It actually is helping to address the likely conflict situation. So I think it's for us as mediators to really look to be futuristic, uh, to be able to step out of just our profession, uh, mediation practice, to be able to look at uh, what are the trends that are out there and how are they going to impact how people people live? Because as humans, as long as you have to interact with each other, we'll have conflict. But then the thing is that uh, a lot of these technologies are being developed maybe to make the workplaces more efficient, effective, uh, to be able to reduce costs. But the thing is also, can, how can we be able to influence these technologies as well to be able to, to reduce conflict yeah, within the workplace? And I think that's really, as mediators, that's a challenge we need to take on 
and be able to take it head on and for us to be active and proactive participant in how this technology evolves. Thank you so much. Thank you for your closing statement. And uh, I believe that uh, what you're telling us is uh, that uh, as mediators, we have the opportunity to be able to not only uh, influence the, uh, the, 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 the uh, mediation uh, field, but to actually influence the mediation field uh, in the evolution of what is uh, uh, quite um, an important area that as mediators we are part of, and this is in the evolution of the practice of dispute resolution and also just the nature and the type of disputes that are in the workplace. And I think that's a very good uh, takeaway for us all as uh, professional mediators. So at this juncture, we do thank our uh, session uh, facilitator, and that is um, Alex Dinge, who works in global business and sustainability. This uh, was our session as part of the Wasiliana Hub Quarter 3 Mediation Day uh, Symposium uh, hosted on this Thursday, September 23rd in the year 2001. And uh, this uh, segment was our 10 a.m. to 12 noon segment, which was a regional panel as part of a regional outlook on the, at the alternatives in labor disputes resolution and workplace uh, relations. We have sessions throughout uh, the day. Our next session is at uh, 2 p.m. as part of a clubhouse session where we will be having our celebration of the International uh, Peace Day. And then we will have our next session. The other session that follows will be at uh, 5 p.m. where we will be focusing on conciliation in the workplace in Kenya. And the closing session for today will be at uh, 7 p.m., which is a session with our fellows uh, as they have training as part of the Northwest Conference um, speakers team. In the morning, we had our morning session at 7 a.m., which is the Women in Mediation Leadership uh, Fellowship Prayer Hour. And we are delighted that we are, clo we are closing this uh, uh, morning session uh, in a very uh, good way. So thank you very much to uh, Alex Ninge for uh, do joining us. We will now be able to uh, close out this session with the words of the Kenyan National Anthem. And I will guide us. The Kenyan national anthem, the first stanza. Oh God of all creation, bless this, our land and nation. Justice, be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to thank you for joining us at the Wasiliana Hub Quarter 3 Mediation Day Symposium. And it has been a delight to be with our session uh, facilitator today, who is a fellowship coach in the ongoing uh, National Fellowship for Mediators in Kenya, and um, Alex Ninge. And with that, I bid you and wish you a very good day. Sikunjema and uh, God bless you. Thank you for joining us today thank you thank you so much <laughs>